So when you are solving logs, sometimes you need to use the properties of logs first, okay? So thinking back to what we did on 7.4, okay? We had these different like methods and ways to solve, you know, depending on what letter you were looking for, okay? But all of them just had one log. I didn't have like multiple logs over here unless it was one of these questions and then both sides had a log and there was nothing else to do, okay? Depending on your question, you still need to get it down to just one log on one side and one on the other or one log on one side and a number on the other. So it depends on which one you have, okay? So the first ones, and again, the easiest ones, are going to be the ones when everything has a log. The whole, you don't see a single number that doesn't have a log by itself, which seems suspiciously to look like an awful lot of these. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, this one's a change. This one's a change. And this one's like the first ones, okay? Do you see the difference how um, all of these up here, even though you may have like a number in front, it's still like attached to a log, okay? All of these, everything has a log. That actually doesn't happen that often. You're more likely to have one like this, where you have logs and then a number, okay? Or like this, logs and a number. You're still gonna first use your properties of logs to put everything together. So I'm gonna start here in question number one. If I have two logs that are added, okay, I can put those together by multiplying my inside. So this is the same thing as a log five of four times two x. So four times two x. I'm going to go ahead and shortcut that a little and say that that's eight x equals the log five of twenty four. So again, the nice thing about these is after you get them together, they are super easy to solve. You mark out the log part, you solve what's left. Twenty four divided by eight x equals three, and you're done. Okay. Same thing on this next one, but I have a log subtracted and I have this number in front. So the first thing you need to remember is that that number actually comes up here and becomes an exponent on this. So that's actually 6 cubed, and if you remember what 6 cubed is, that's 216. Okay. Since they are dividing, since they are subtracting, I just gave it away. Since they are subtracting to put them together, I am going to have to divide these two things. So when I put this together, that's 216, or uh, I should have done this first, 6 cubed divided by 8. So this becomes log 4 of 216 divided by 8 equals log of x. Well, you cancel that out. 216, I don't think it really divides. Oh, it does divide by 8. Who knew? To be 27. Yeah, I knew that. Totally. Same thing here on the next one. you got to put all this together. So the first thing you want to take care of are your things in front. Those become exponents. 25 to the 1 half power is just 5. Because these two logs are added, that I'm going to multiply my insides together and get that this is log 6 of 5x equals log 6 of 20. Again, the logs cancel out. I solve that. I get x equals 4. Okay, so the hardest part is just using those logs, the laws of logs to put it together. Here, they're subtracted. I don't have any numbers in front. So this is going to be the same thing as log 2 of 4 divided by x plus 3 equals log 2 of 8. Then you have to solve that. So the thing is, when you get to all this solving business, this is where every single rule you've ever learned in algebra starts to come back into play. Okay, I have to solve this. Well, the easiest thing, you cannot really solve for an x on the bottom. Two ways you can do it. One is you could put the 8 over 1 and solve it like a proportion with your cross multiply. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just say, well, I need to get this x out of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides. This will cancel. That gives me 4 equals, and if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and distribute 8x plus 24, and I subtract the 24. Sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see that. Subtract the 24. I get negative 20, 8x equals negative 20, divided by 8, that equals x equals negative, those can both divide by 4, 5 over 2. Okay. Same thing on the next one, except it's a little bit easier, but maybe harder, I don't know. When you do this, again, subtraction, that's division. So, and every once in a while when these both have logs, I do like to take a little bit of a shortcut and just do the 2x divided by 3. If you see that and you feel comfortable with that, go for it. You just have to 
be sure you're paying attention again when you get to something like this, okay? Because you cannot, cannot, cannot do that there, okay? When I get ready to solve this, I'm going to multiply by 3. Or I guess you could work with 2 thirds. That's up to you. 2x equals 3x minus 3. That gives me negative x equals negative 3 or x equals 3, okay? Mm, this next one's a good one. I'm going to skip it for just a second. Let's do this one first. So... Be careful here when you have something crazy like this. Remember, this is not a negative, well, I guess you could do it as a negative 3, but it's not really a negative 3. That 3 becomes your exponent. That's 5 cubed, okay, or 125. So this, again, if it's subtracted, I'm going to divide them. x divided by 125 equals, this 2 also becomes an exponent. A 10 squared is 100. So I'm going to do 100. I'm going to have to multiply by 125 to get that out of the denominator. That is going to be x equals 125 with two zeros. Boom. Okay. Um, this next one's pretty basic too. Again, it's subtraction. Nothing has an exponent. So that's c plus 3 divided by 4c minus 1 equals 5. Okay, again, this is where there's just basic laws of algebra come into effect. How do you solve a question that looks like this? Again, you could put the 5 over 1 into a proportion, or you could multiply by 4c minus 1. Either way, you have to get the variable out of the denominator before you can solve it. Don't try to do anything crazy there. That's c plus 3 equals, again, if I distribute 20c minus 5. Don't forget, you have to distribute. I see that a lot. When I solve this, this gives me 19c equals 8. I skipped a step there, so I hope you followed along. Or c equals 8 divided by 19. You can't simplify that one anymore. Okay. One more here, and I'll show you why this one gets so tricky. It's super fun. Is because of this 2 right here. Remember that becomes an exponent. So this becomes x plus 1 squared equals 11 minus x. Oh, so when you square x plus 1, don't tell me that that's just x squared plus 1 because you square both of them. Remember, you have to actually FOIL this out. When you FOIL out an x plus 1 times an x plus 1 or you use your perfect square shortcut, you know that that's x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 11 minus x. When you solve this, you're going to have to factor. You add an x, you subtract the 11. That gives you x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. When you factor this, that's a plus, that's a minus, multiplies to be 10 and subtracts to be 3 is a 5 and a 2. x equals negative 5, x equals 2. If you plug in the negative 5 here though, negative 5 plus 1 does not work, even if it's squared, right? Negative 5. The reason it sh they say it should work is if you plug in negative 5 here, that's 11 minus a negative 5, which becomes 16. Negative 5 plus 1 squared. Meh, that's debatable. We'll say it's good, even though I'm not sure it is. Uh, so these last two are where things get a little bit different, but not much. You still, step one, have to use your properties of logs to combine them. Okay, so I know this 3 becomes an exponent on the x. I know this 2 becomes an exponent on the 5x, and I know that I'm going to divide because I'm subtracting. However, you cannot cancel out that log. This is still x cubed divided by 5x whole thing squared, but it just equals 2. So you can't get in a hurry and just start canceling out logs because the only way to get rid of the log here is to rewrite it where it's not a log. So that's going to be 2 to the second power equals x cubed over 5x squared. When I simplify everything a little here, that gives me 4 equals x cubed over five, uh, 25x squared. Okay. Two ways you can do this, you could multiply by the x squared, but you should know by now that this simplifies to be x over 25. When you multiply by 25, you get x equals 100. Very similar on the next one. Nothing crazy to do with exponents here. These are just dividing log 5 of x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1 equals 2. Again, because this side doesn't have a log, I need to rewrite it where it's not a log first. 5 squared is 25. 
Again, I'm going to have to multiply by 2x minus 1 to get it out of the denominator. Again, I'm going to distribute because I am cool like that and I can do it. That's 50x minus 25 equals x plus 3. That's 20, no, no. It's 49x equals 28. 49 and 28, those are both divisible by 7, so x equals uh, 4 over 7. Cool. So that's using our properties of logs. Uh, again, be sure you're paying attention to which type you have. The type where everything has a log or the type where not everything has a log. Be sure you're solving those correctly.